This video is made possible by Cheddar, who recently launched their YouTube channel and are making videos that cover business, technology, media, and news, but without the boring parts. Be sure to check out their video after this. Okay, since I feel like the last few videos have been kinda depressing, we're gonna try something a little different this time. Sure, there are a lot of negative things happening on any given day, but that doesn't mean you need to sacrifice your own personal happiness. In this video, we're going to look at some of the most effective ways to improve your mental state and help you feel happier. For a lot of this episode, I'll be drawing on my own personal experience with what's helped me. Let's jump right in. The first and probably easiest thing you can do to improve your mental state is to remove unnecessary distractions from your everyday life, especially if those distractions tend to make you irritated or angry. A couple weeks ago, I removed all the social media apps from my phone. Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, all the things I found myself opening when I had a moment to spare, or even when I didn't. I can't overstate how immediate of an impact this had. My supply of angry tweets was cut off, my endless feed of Reddit posts no longer easily accessible. At first I found myself wondering what to do when I was waiting for a video to render, or waiting in line at the grocery store. But within a couple days, I was using that time to be more productive, or at least more present. I could vacuum the living room while I wait for that video. I can look around and notice little things at the grocery store that I would have missed otherwise. Everything becomes more interesting when you don't have that crutch to lean on. My overall mood improved too. I would check Reddit and Twitter on my laptop in the morning, then that would be it until I was done working for the day. For all the hours in between, whatever I was doing had my complete attention. That leads us to our next item, trying to be more present, more aware of what's around you. It's amazing how your environment completely changes when you let yourself focus on it. If you're outside, what does the breeze feel like? What can you smell? Trees? Someone cooking something across the street? I've started watching cars go by for a couple minutes at a time and trying to guess where each person is off to based on their car and how they're dressed. Little things that help you engage with the present will go a long way towards making you feel less railroaded in your routine. It can be really hard to feel happy when you do the same thing every day, see the same people, make the same commute. But if you can inject just a little bit of novelty into your daily routine, suddenly things don't seem so dull. Ask your coworker a question you haven't asked before, or just ask them if they're having a good day. Listen to a podcast on your commute. There are so many options to add spice to your bland day with very little effort, and it makes a huge difference. In short, take time to appreciate the moments that make up your day, rather than wishing your life away until quitting time and then sitting down with your phone until you go to bed. On the subject of time, a friend of mine recently said something that's really stuck with me. He said, there are just enough hours in the day to do everything you really want to do. And the more I've thought about it, the more I've come to see how accurate that statement is. If you really want to accomplish something, you can put aside all your distractions, give that task the focus it requires, and get it done. A few months ago, I would complain that there simply aren't enough hours in the day to be as productive as I want to be. But what I've come to find out is that it wasn't the number of hours that was limiting me, it was my own habits. I would be on Reddit and Twitter for at least an hour in the morning, then cumulatively another two and a half or three throughout the day. I didn't realize it at the time, but I would call it an addiction. I just got trapped scrolling through stuff that didn't really matter. What's worse, it made me feel awful. Without fail, every time I got stuck on my phone I would lose any momentum I had, feel sluggish and unmotivated, and have to drag myself back to whatever I was doing before. It had an undeniably negative effect on my happiness. Since I've cut out most social media use, my head has felt clearer and I've had more hours than I know what to do with. Okay, that's a bit of an overstatement, but I have had a lot more time to tackle other projects, which has given me a huge boost in happiness. Now I want to talk about something that I think is pretty useful. It's a tool that will help us find other ways to make us happier. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It represents each of the different levels of human needs, from the most basic at the bottom to what can be described as the pinnacle of human desire at the top. The bottom tier, physiological needs, can be satisfied very easily. We need sleep, and even if we don't want to, our body will force us to sleep at some point. Meeting this need doesn't really influence our happiness, it just keeps us alive. The same goes for safety. If we're out of imminent danger, we can relax. We may feel happy to be out of danger, but that's about it. Once you get into the third tier, that's when fulfilling these needs starts to have a real impact on your mental state. The need for love and belonging is a very strong part of what makes us human. This usually includes family, friends, and life partners. In seeking to maximize happiness at this level, you want to not only surround yourself with people you genuinely care about and who care about you, but also separate yourself from people who have a negative effect on your mental state. If someone is unkind, or overly petty, or never shows up to planned meetings, cut them out of your life. If they don't care enough to show you some basic respect, they don't deserve your attention. On the flip side, if somebody goes out of their way to be kind to others, particularly you, you know that person is worth your time and will have a positive impact on your happiness. 
I saw a tweet recently that said something like, It's 2018. Being disinterested and cynical is out. Being unashamedly passionate about your interests is in. I think that's a great perspective. Finding people who are genuine and excited about the things they like is a great way to have some of that enthusiasm rub off on you. The next step up on the hierarchy is esteem, and this one is a beast for a lot of people, myself included. Having a sense of self-worth is critical to being happy, and this can be a major stumbling block when we're stuck in a rut and just feel useless. This tier can also refer to the need to be respected or seen as valuable by other people, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but judging your worth by external measurements is a good way to keep yourself from building a healthy level of self-esteem. Here's the deal. We all feel like we're a fraud. Even very successful people, define that as you will, who are loved and admired by thousands often admit to feeling like they haven't contributed anything of value, or they don't like the person they are. Most people struggle with self-esteem to some extent, but we really shouldn't. Ask yourself, what would it take to see yourself as valuable? Be good at something? I guarantee you already are. It might not be what you imagine is an important skill, but if you got out a piece of paper and started writing down things you're good at, you would surprise yourself. You can be good at video games, cooking, identifying that Disney song that just started playing before everybody else, that's my useless skill, math, writing short stories, DMing a D&D campaign. Everyone is good at something, no matter how silly or insignificant you feel it may be. Once we stop measuring our worth by external sources, we realize that, yeah, we're pretty good at that one thing, and we have just as much right to be proud and happy as anyone else. The final tier is the most difficult and perhaps the most important one, and it's a need that most of us will pursue for the rest of our lives. The need for self-actualization. Who am I? What is my full potential? What makes me truly happy? How can I use my talent and abilities to become the best version of me I can be? This is where we really get into the nitty gritty of seeking happiness. What makes me happy? Up until college, I felt like I was a non-person. Just some guy without many real hobbies or skills, no career aspirations or long-term goals. I was simply the product of what people wanted me to be up until that point. And it wasn't until after I graduated that I really started to consider what it was that I wanted out of life. I was on autopilot until finally I took the reins and said, you know what, let's try this hobby. Or let's learn about this topic. Let's set a goal or two. If you had told me five years ago that I would find the most satisfaction in working with my hands out in the garage, I would have said you were crazy. And yet here I am, often wishing for nothing more than to go out and build something. Since I've picked up the hobby, I've built my own workbench, some simple furniture for my wife, I'm learning to make pipes, and I just finished a longboard the other day. Be open to new experiences, even the ones you feel like you won't enjoy, and you'll be amazed what you find out is a perfect fit. You might find out that you just really enjoy working. That's awesome. It's a great way to support yourself and a family if you want one. Even those of us who weren't so keen on the idea often find a huge amount of satisfaction in a job well done. My first semester in college, I did hardly any work, skipped classes, played Smash with my sweetmates, and earned myself a 1.67 GPA. Not because I was lazy, though I would have called it that at the time, it's just that I didn't enjoy that particular work. Now my days are completely filled with work that I've made for myself that I do enjoy. I make YouTube videos, I'm currently freelancing for two different companies, I always have a woodworking project going, and in the past couple weeks I've started on a secret project with Joseph from Real Life Lore. Find the work you enjoy doing, even if it's not your job, and do it well. Create something permanent that you can look at and say, wow, I did that. Write a short story, paint a picture, carve a spoon, compose some music. Creating things is one of the most effective ways to make yourself happy and proud of who you are and what you can do. Set some goals, even if they're not what people typically think of as conventional. Set a goal to finish your entire Steam library by the end of next year. Determine to read one book every month. No one gets to set your goals for you. Pick something that will make you proud and happy to have achieved, and start working towards it. For me, it's saving up enough money to give the old Volvo wagon sitting in my backyard a complete makeover, including a glorious 6-liter V8. Even if no one else in the world cares about it, pick the thing that will motivate you and make you happy to accomplish. This video could easily be an hour long with all the little tips and tricks I've learned along the way, but we're going to end it here for now. But before we do, let's do a quick recap. To make yourself happier, you should try to eliminate unnecessary distractions, be more present and appreciate the in-between moments, use your hours wisely, cut out toxic people and surround yourself with positive influences, allow yourself to be proud of your talents, whatever they are, try new things, do work you enjoy and do it well, create things, and set goals you care about. There's no magic solution to all of life's problems, but if you try to keep a positive outlook and cultivate a lifestyle enriched by things you care about, I guarantee it'll make a big difference. If you want to see Maslow's hierarchy of needs applied to Fortnite, check out this video from Cheddar. 
Cheddar recently launched their own YouTube channel and are making videos that cover business, technology, media, and news, but without the boring parts. I just watched their video about Fortnite and the hierarchy of needs, and it's pretty fun. You should check it out too. And if you like it, consider subscribing to their channel, which has tons of other fun and informational content, and watch more of their videos.